join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. for the show Women of Courage. Wherever you are in the world, I need you to know one thing right now. You are amazing. I know you might be upset. I know you might be hurting. And I know you might be frustrated. I know because all of these things happened to me. I was homeless for two years and all I had was a computer, my son, and a car. I want you to know you still have a purpose in life and it is my job to help you believe that again. Do you want to believe? Can you see that the divorce was not meant to take you out? Can you believe that the lost house and the lost job is a setup for something greater? By the end of this broadcast, you'll be injected with so much that you cannot help but believe again. And I am going to help you do just that. Are you ready? I got some things I want to share with you. And I will even make suggestions on books and activities that you can implement, which will ultimately bring healing and wholeness to you. If you are ready to be healed, if you're ready to be whole, just jot down the corners I give and watch your life transform. No matter what happened, no matter whose fault it was, today is a new day, and your time to live and be free is now. Join me in this journey to wholeness. Your time for total healing is now. Today you shall recover. Wholeness, healness, and peacefulness is in the mind. That is where all battles for life end and begin. The Women of Courage show is being broadcast by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries to help you problem solve, to help you dream again, to help you believe that anything is possible. We want you to believe that you do not have to marry the first man you meet just to get someone to take care of you. You do not have to live a life of drudgery. 
You can educate yourself. All you have to do is learn to read competently. We want you to take a chance on yourself. Stop believing all the soothsayers around you that have never left the state in their lives. People who do not have the courage to fly. People who only think of lying, cheating, and stealing. You can live an exciting life. All you have to do is believe that you can make your dreams come true. You do not have to go to bed with someone you despise day in and day out. You have the right to marry someone that you can talk to, to someone that believes in you and has faith in you as a human being. In other words, you do not have to settle for just anyone. But what you must do is strive toward your goal. You must be goal-oriented. You must organize yourself. You must be clear about what you want in life and why you want such a life. All of us are made up of dreams. As our dreams unfold in our lives, our spirit soars. Realizing our dreams becomes a problem because oftentimes we are beaten down by our friends and family. We are beaten down at school by people laughing at us because of our shoe size, our ear size, our breast size, the clothes we wear, etc. We are beaten down by people saying nothing will come of our lives. We are beaten down when our mothers and grandmothers constantly say that we're going to be just like our father, an inmate in prison. Many of us are also discouraged when our mothers are inattentive. She is wrapped up in her new boyfriend. But life anew is possible. It is my job to encourage you to go as far as you can dream and as far as your dreams can take you. It is my job to get you to believe in life again. I am sick and tired of people failing at life just because they are around negative speaking and negative acting people. Do not let the failure of other people make you lose confidence in yourself. Yes, you may be surrounded by poverty, but you must look for a way out. The book, If You Believe in God, You Do Not Belong in Prison, will help you. What you must do above all else is learn to read competently. You must read, read, and read. Anyone who laughs at you for reading, you need to leave that person alone. I do not care if it's your mother. Anyone who discourages you, you are to stop all association. Man is not different than plants. We need encouragement to grow as plants need water to thrive. You are to leave foolish, stupid people alone. Their ignorance will weigh you down or even get you killed. Sit down and think how you can avoid these people, especially if they're in your family. If you are overwhelmed with the tiring feeling that feels as if you're carrying a bag of stone around every morning when you get out of bed and think how you'll have to spend another living life you're not passionate about. The books I suggest are the perfect solution for your unique needs. Not only will we help you realize why these feelings overwhelm you and what you can do to change it, but they will also teach you how to live a life of strength, courage, fearlessness in order to realize all of your dreams. If you are lacking the attitude and psychology, proper resource or vision to make your dreams a reality, combined with dissatisfaction with the execution of your plans, but you remain firmly dedicated to making your ambition a reality and creating the life you deserve, you will certainly derive the most benefit from professional, incredible content within these books. Contents that will assist you in achieving the results that you are after. You are never to give up on yourself. Are you ready? to leave your future to chance? Of course not. Take your life in your hand and learn all the necessary tools, mindset strategies used by the men and women of courage used in order to live the life of their dream. Change your life with our book starting today.
for the next four or five months, in fact, almost for the next six months, I am going to be discussing three books. I am going to discuss Women of Courage, The Prayer Jar, and You Are the Prophet of Your Life. The reason why I'm going to continue discussing these books is because repetition you learn from. When things are repeated to you, you have an opportunity to actually listen and learn from this information that has been repeated to you over and over again. These are some good books. These books were written to inspire you. These books were written to get you to change your life, to give you information on how to change your life, to help you. These books were written to make you feel better. They are to be read over and over again until the information reverberates in your spirit. I want you to read these books. I want you to read Women of Courage. I want you to read The Prayer Jar. I want you to read the book, You Are the Prophet of Your Life. You do not have to live a miserable life. You can change that life, but you need information. And the only way to get good information is through reading. You must read. If you cannot read, then you need to get someone to teach you to read. You need to go to a library and ask a librarian who in the area teaches adults to read. You must learn to read. If you cannot read, then get someone to read a book to you. But you must operate your life on information, not gossip and hearsay and stupidity and ignorant sayings by stupid people. These books will actually help you. Please read them. The books are You Are the Prophet of Your Life, The Prayer Jar, and Women of Courage. You do not have to live a stupid, ignorant life. It is essential that you begin reading. You cannot sustain a credible existence without reading. Your children need for you to read. Your husband needs for you to read. And you need to read for yourself. I am going to go over and over and over again about the importance of reading. If you do not read, you are walling yourself off from the advancements that are being made by people living all around you and the world. People are going and prospering because they read and learn and apply what they have read. If you do not read, you think you're going to keep up with these people or understand the new inventions that are being brought into the marketplace? No, you're wrong. You will not be able to keep up with your friends or family or co-workers unless you read. Today I'm going to discuss the U.S. House Representative Val Demings. Before I discuss Representative Bell Demings, I want you to know that the Democrats in Congress are m more and better educated than the Republicans. A lot of people do not realize this. Most Democrats have advanced degrees. The Republicans' lack of education shows it's demonstrated when they make stupid statements and commit irony and they have no idea how what they said sounds like. Now, the Republicans are trying to rewrite history. They're trying to deny people the right to vote. And they are trying to deny the insurrection of January 6th. Let us see how well that works out for the Republicans. Because class and knowledge will win out every time. The Affordable Care Act just underwent its third challenge in the Supreme Court by the Republicans. The Republicans were so intent in their prejudice to destroy President Obama's legacy that they did not think nor care if they destroyed Obamacare. It 
would ruin the lives of millions of their followers in red states who signed up for Obamacare. More than a million people in Texas have Obamacare for health insurance. I also want you to note the fact that education plays a part in the type of people who are adamant followers of the Republican Party and Donald Trump. These are some of the most least educated and racist people in the country. These people are so uneducated that they do not realize the Republican Party is actually screwing them. Excuse me for the use of that word, but that's exactly what is happening. The Republican Party is keeping them stupid. The Republican Party is keeping the Democrats from excusing student loans that would help many of these people. The Republican Party is holding up the jobs bill that would help many of the people in red states because if it were known people in blue states make more money and pay more in taxes than people in red states. More than 31 million people in this country are covered under Obamacare. I want you to note that U.S. Representative Val Demings has a master's degree. This is why she was one of the impeachment managers selected by Speaker Pelosi. In 2020, Representative Demings introduced the Every American Has the Right to Vote Act. The legislation would prohibit states from denying voting rights to American citizens regardless of prior criminal convictions because on September 11, 2020, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals issued a decision denying the vote to over 800,000 Floridians by requiring them to repay an unknown, untracked, and hidden fines and fees before they would be given the right to vote. Now note this, half of the 11th Circuit Court judges were appointed by President Donald Trump. So you can see Representative Val Demings is not a lightweight. I feel we need to discuss Representative Demings because I want you to use her as an example to all the women out there who have given up on themselves. I want you to see all of what she has accomplished in her life. You can do the same. All of you who decided college was not for you. All the women who graduated from high school looking for fast money. All the women who decided retail fraud was the way to go. All of you who decided it was better to dance in a topless bar than to pursue a higher education. By now, you should be tired of going to bars looking for a man for easy money. You really should be tired. This is Val Deming's first term in Congress. Well, on June 9, 2021, Val Demings announced that she was going to run for senator for the state of Florida. Val Demings is already a member of Congress. She is the U.S. Representative for the Orlando, Florida District. Val Demings represents the 10th District of Florida. Well, she has now decided she wants a promotion. There are already two senators for the state of Florida. They are Rick Scott and Marco Rubio. Both men are members of the Republican Party. Neither of these men have a particular stirring reputation. They tend to follow the Trump bandwagon. Val Demings represents the 10th district, which is centered around Orlando and the surrounding suburbs such as Lockhart, Oak Ridge and Zellwood. Democratic Val Demings has represented this district since 2017. She was elected with 65% of the vote in 2016. In 2022, during this election, she will have to appeal to the entire state because she wants to be Senator of Florida. When Val Demings announced her candidacy, she said this, 
I'm running for the U.S. Senate because I will never tire of standing up for what is right. I will never tire of serving Florida, never tire of doing good. She said, when you grow up in the South, poor, black, and female, you have to have faith in progress and opportunity. My father was a janitor and my mother was a maid. People said, Belle, never grow tired of doing good. Never tire. Work hard. Not just for yourself, but for everyone. Now, let's explore who Belle Demings is. Her name is actually Valdez Venita Demings. Val Demings is 64 years old, and she's a black woman that lives in Jacksonville, Florida. She was born March 12, 1957. This means she graduated high school around 1975. She went to Florida State University and graduated in 1979. Then she went to the Weber University, where she earned a master's degree in public administration in 1996 which means she's around the age of uh, 39 when she got her master's degree. She has been married eight years. In fact, she was working on her master's degree during her marriage, married in 1988. She has only been married once. She has three children by her husband. No children were born outside of the marriage. She has five grandchildren. Now here's the kicker. This is what is upsetting Senator Rubio. Val Demings worked for the Orlando Police Department for 27 years. She began working for the department in 1983. She had been out of college for four years when she became a police officer, which was from 2007 to 2011. She worked as the chief of police of the Orlando Police Department. She was the first female chief. When you look at Val Demings' career, you can see she was determined and confident in herself. She wanted to make something of her life, so she made serious choices. She put nothing before her education. She had children wisely, and she married wisely. She set goals for herself, and she did what was necessary to achieve these goals. She did not seek out fast ways of making money, like retail fraud and dancing in bars. She wanted to make something of herself. She may have worked at a fast food restaurant, but that was not the end of the line for her. Now during the Senate race, she's up against a formidable opponent. Let us see how well she does now that she has challenged the incumbent Florida Senator Marco Rubio, who is a Republican. Marco Rubio is a slippery politician. He turned against his mentor Jeb Bush when he no longer needed Jeb Bush. Her opponent Marco Rubio voted to protect Trump when Trump faced his second impeachment for inciting a riot at the US Capitol in January 2021. A month earlier Marco Rubio helped himself to a COVID-19 vaccination which was in short supply in his state at the time. He didn't tell anybody. The reporters found out about it. Val Deming said in the Orlando Sentinel, Marco Rubio voted against the stimulus checks. He voted against COVID relief for schools and our small businesses. And he voted against helping those on the front lines, our first responders, our teachers, and our healthcare workers. She went on to tell Orlando Sentinel, the filibuster has been used as a partisan weapon for decades. We were not elected to be obstructionists. We were elected to get things done. And when we talk about protecting some of the most basic rights in this country, the filibuster has blocked those things and we need to get rid of it. She said the most important question with regards to Rubio's legislative record, does an effective Republican I am going to pause equate for to a what's best for Floridians? Take a short break while you the answer to, to that is clearly no. And encouragement. I am the best it's candidate all a of for the job. And, behaviors. and please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. 
what I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. It's just as important to how you end the day as it is to how you start the day. And that's with positivity. Now we can't change what has happened today, but we can change our thoughts into tomorrow. Now before you sleep, you need to make sure you're in a calm state of mind. Distractions. I want you to start thinking about all of your dreams and goals coming true. I want you to really picture how life would be once you meet those goals. How happy would you be? How would your life change for the better if you met these goals? Now you can start to feel. start to feel the heaviness turn into light. Every moment you stay in this calm state, you start to feel better. Feel more comfortable. You start to feel more assured. This is how you end every day. Thinking about your goals. Thinking about your accomplishments. Thinking about the positive people. All the support you have, all the people wishing you success, this is how you end your day. A calm state with positive thoughts. Your future is now. Visualize it into tomorrow. You need to live life with a purpose. You need to spend the time needed to explore, to find your true passion. There are so many unhappy people in this world not willing to make a change. There are so many unhappy people not focusing on the big picture. One out of three people are happy with their lives. Think about that for a second. 70% of the people you see every day are not happy. And the majority of that has to do with purpose. People are programmed, wired to be okay with the minimum. People stay in jobs they're not passionate about. They date people who don't support them, hang out with people who don't help them grow. This can't be you. You need to spend the time to discover what your true calling is. What are you passionate about? What do you see yourself doing to make your mark? Are you in a job right now that you're truly happy with? Do you wake up every morning excited to start your day? If not, that's okay. You know now this isn't fulfilling you. But what are you going to do about it? Are you willing to make a change to help reach your goals? If you are, it needs to start now. Because this won't happen overnight. Finding your true calling. But once you do, you will see how everything changes. You will begin to see the quality of your life increase. All those problems you had, they slowly fade. You begin to see how powerful life is with 
a purpose. Anything that you want in this life can be obtained. You just need to believe. Believe in yourself. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are resilient. You are what we call the women of courage. And your time is now. There are no victims in this life. So I'm asking you, are you ready to make a change? Are you ready to fight for what you want? Are you ready to fight for your dreams? If you are, it starts now. This is the Women of Courage. Hi, I decided that at the end of every show for the next year, I would share excerpts from a book that I believe would enhance your life and make you a stronger thinker and problem solver. All characteristics that will help you win at life and raise stronger and healthy children. Many of you turn your nose up at reading or you snub the advice that you must read in life to succeed or you compare the cost of a book to getting a new pair of shoes or getting your hair done or your nails done. The reason why you make these cost comparisons is because you do not truly value a book. A book is a magnificent instrument that can change the course of your life and the lives of your children. In later shows, I plan to discuss with you how a book changed certain, the lives of certain people. I understand that you do not earn a lot of money. And this money is valuable to you because of all the things you see advertised that you desire. And you do not want to spend a lot of money on a book. A new pair of shoes is more valuable to you than a book. If you truly cannot afford a book, then you need to go to the library and take your children with you for a day of reading. You must gird your loins and proceed at educating yourself. Some of you seem to think that having a conversation with your stupid girlfriend or your stupid boyfriend will help you more than reading a book. When actually having a conversation with your loudmouth girlfriend or loudmouth boyfriend is merely a cathartic allowing you to blow off steam and proclaim how life has been so unfair to you. What you do not realize is that the advice coming from your do-nothing girlfriend or your do-nothing boyfriend is advice coming from a fool. Your do-nothing girlfriend is a sexual opportunist looking for a man she can impress with her body. When her vagina fails her, what will your girlfriend do but go to work at McDonald's or Wendy at the age of 60 and continue to spread her ignorance at church? Her daughter will be on the street and her son in prison. She will never realize that her life is the result of the decision she made not to educate herself through reading. All her life, she felt that she had something better to do than reading. She had something better to do than reading with her children. She had something better to do than working with her children. And that was going to the bar, trying to entertain a man, or trying to find some man that would buy her a pair of shoes. A man spending money on her was more important than educating herself. In later shows, I'm going to spend a great deal of time giving you some examples of fools. These are people who think they are smart, willing to trade their body and integrity for a dollar bill. These people end up in the cemetery after lamenting each and every day of their lives about their unfilled dreams. Do not be upset by the use of the word fool. 
You tell me if a woman is not a fool to instruct her grandson to kill her husband for a $25,000 life insurance. Let that sink in for a moment. Instead of instructing her grandson to make something of his life, the grandmother instructs her grandson to become a murderer, to kill his grandfather. I have this anecdotal advice for you about reading. Listen to this short true story. A friend and I were talking. She said a woman she knew called her and sought to renew their friendship. During their conversation, the woman told my friend that President Trump had done so much for black people and that's why she voted for him in 2016 and she was going to vote for him again in the upcoming election. My friend asked her a question. She said, tell me some of the things that Trump has done for black people. The woman said a whole lot. My friend persisted and asked her to name one thing that Trump had done for black people. The woman could not. The woman kept using the phrase a whole lot of things. My friend said after a while she stopped talking. Finally the conversation was over and my friend hung up. My friend said as she hung up, she made up her mind right then that she would never renew her friendship with this woman. Now ask yourself why. Why would she not renew her friendship with this woman? You can answer this question in two words. The woman was a poor thinker. She never investigated anything that was told to her. Whether you know it or not, a person who is a poor thinker who does not examine his or her thinking is a very dangerous person indeed. Think about it. Today we will be discussing the book, What You Must Do to Win. This is an excellent read, and after you finish reading it, you will enjoy it, but you must put some of the ideas that the author talks about into practice. Reading is not enough. You must put these ideas into practice. The book, What You Must Do to Win, starts off with the question, are you not tired of being a fool? Then that question is followed by a quote from the Scarlet Letter. The quote says, man for any considerable period can wear one face to himself and another to the multitude without finally getting bewildered as to which may be the truth. You loan Paul money, he never pays it back. You help Julia with her children, but she never remembers you during Christmas. There is more to life than looking for an opportunity to lie, cheat, and steal. Consider this, spending 20 to 40 years in prison is a waste of your life. You can do better and you need to tell yourself that you can do better. Have some pride about yourself. Learn to think. Learn to read well and leave your foolish friends behind. Stop being afraid of life and stop avoiding the responsibility you have to yourself. Some people say if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Why not read this book and find out how reading can change your life and bring health and wealth to you. You have nothing to lose. Two hours out of your day will change your life drastically. Just because you started your life from a position of weakness does not mean that you have to remain weak. Take control of your life. Stop associating with men who are fools. In this book, you're going to learn how to recognize a fool, even if that fool is yourself. The only problem with being a fool is if one continues to be a fool. Everyone makes mistakes and everyone does foolish things. That behavior is part of life. 
but the behavior does not have to be part of your life in continuing that behavior. When is enough enough? When are you going to face the fact that your marriage is no good because of you? When are you going to face the fact that your children are failing at life because of you? When are you going to face the fact that you need to change? You need to know when you are talking to a fool. You need to know how to recognize a fool. The word fool is not a nice term. People do not like it. The word is demeaning and makes people feel bad to be called a fool. Nevertheless, the word remains in the dictionary because it is a word that accurately describes the behavior of some people. If you do not like being a fool or you are tired of thinking you are a fool, it is time to change. When you left high school, you never envisioned yourself spending time in jail. You never envisioned yourself as a drug courier. You never thought you would burglarize a house or sit inside of a dope house holding a shotgun just to make money. You could have avoided all of these jobs if you had learned to read. All you have to do is learn to read. Reading brings you knowledge, and knowledge brings you creative ideas and know-how. You can learn a new trade by reading. You can learn to become a mechanic by reading, a carpenter by reading, and even a plumber if you know how to read. You need to make up your mind that you want to do something with your life, and then you need to change. You need to change your environment, and you need to change your friends. Wisdom is defined as the quality or state of being wise. Knowledge of what is true or right, coupled with just judgment as to action, discernment, or insight. How wise are you going to be today? Are you going to change? Are you going to start living your life being respectful of yourself and others? If you participate in any of the above behaviors, you are not only foolish, you are a follower. You let someone tell you that that behavior was smart. So one of the first steps of not being foolish is to change your friends. Leave all your, the foolish people in your life alone. There is too much pain in our communities. There are too many people living painful lives. We have too many unhappy children. We have too many unhappy seniors. There is too much anger in our community. There is too much hatred in our community. And there is too much self-loathing in our community. Something needs to be done about it. A few hours of your time can solve the problem. All you have to do is learn to read and separate yourself from evil thinking people. You must separate yourself from all the predators living around you. One thing which may be painful is that you must realize there can be evilness in your family. Once you identify evil acting people in your family, you must leave them alone. You must not eat with, sleep with, talk with, or walk with anyone who is essentially different than you. If you do, you may lose your life or either their evilness may cause the death of your children. God is not going to defend your mind for you. It is your responsibility. With the word of God in your mouth and in your heart, you can defeat the enemy's suggestions every time. You know that you're talking to the enemy anytime you become angry at a conversation, irritated or depressed. Here is a word from Ephesians 4.21 to 24. It says, since you have heard about Jesus and you have learned the truth that comes from him, 
throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. This is your new identity in Jesus Christ. Put forth your best effort to keep yourself in the right frame of mind. Stay in the word and keep out of the wrong influences as an act of your will. When you become a good custodian over your thought life, you will be victorious over the negative thinking and the pain associated with that thought life. Ephesians 4.21 says God's word can defeat the enemy's suggestions. And the verse says the spirit can renew our thoughts and our attitude. Why not try God's word and see what it can do for your life? You believe in ghosts and goblins. You believe in monsters. Why can't you believe in God? You need to make up your mind whether or not you believe there is a God. If you believe God exists, then you follow him. You need to make up in your mind what type of life you want to live and you who you want living that life with you or around you. If your best friends exhibit bad behavior, you will just have to leave him or her alone. Galatians 4.13 says, tell, it tells you, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That is you want that is what you want to do ask God to strengthen you these are the two passages in the Bible that you must take with you when you go into battle a battle as defined as any opposition I'm not talking about just a battle with guns I'm talking about a battle of the mind when you have to go to work and you're tired because you've been working two jobs that is right you will always be in a battle when you try to change your life and stop associating with bad people. You will need help when you try to extricate yourself from the affairs of others, including your family members. Put these passages to memory. They will serve you well during hard times when you despair, when you are afraid, you think God has not heard you. The world says when you are experiencing hard times, you're supposed to suffer. You are supposed to, to do what you have to do. In other words, prostitute your body, steal or kill for food, accept low wages, and accept abuse from your employer. Go home, eat a plate of denial, and drink a glass of hatred. You are to bemoan your life and accept your fate. Read these passages several times, especially while you are at work during your break or lunch hour. These passages will help you through the day. Your enemy does not want you to believe in Psalms 23 or Psalms 91. He wants you to believe your situation is desperate. Just remember the situation with the leopards. God has always turned the situation around. The Syrians had deserted their camp, but no one in Samaria knew it until the leopards stumbled upon the Syrian camp. Then they went and told everyone the news. Remember Isaiah 65, 24? People were praying inside the wall for God to deliver them. And they had received their deliverance and they didn't know it. It took the lepers going to the enemy's camp for the Israelites to realize they had been saved. Sometimes you have to be still, quiet your spirit so you can receive directions. We live in a physical world, but our destiny is determined in the spiritual world. God has given us his word to tell us how to conduct our lives. God says we are to take his word to create a life, repeat his word to enhance our creative power. God says choose life. To do this, you must believe and you must stand up. Do not let negative people and toxic relationships keep you from realizing your dreams. You can be a better person. You must stop doing what you're doing 
and decide on a better life. The drinking, the smoking, the snorting coke, the lustering after someone else's boyfriend or husband, and sexing every day changes what you can realize out of life. Disrespect yourself, have sex with every man you meet, and bring people in, men especially, into your home and allow them to mistreat your children. You have given up. You do not know how to manage your life. How long are you going to go before you change? Your children will not survive if you do not change. Take a good look at your children. They will not have a future if you do not change. Are you not tired of being or seeing black boys and black men being carted off to prison for lack of knowledge and opportunity? Are you not tired of seeing black women standing on the corner prostituting? Are you not tired of envying other people saying to yourself, I wish that were me? Stop fantasizing, stop being ashamed because you are poor and uneducated and afraid. Stand up and change your life. Change is hard, but why die expressing regret? Why get up in the morning to live your nightmare the whole day? Doing things that make it a horrible day. Wasting time and taking pain. Just wishing for things to change without realizing you can be the change. You can be the prophet of your own life. You are the solution. You can turn your life around. You can still complete your education. You can still find a better job. You can still find love. You can still be happy. Take control of your life. Live the life you deserve because you are the prophet of your life. You can read the first chapter of the book by going to the website https colon slash slash touchedbythelight.us. Order You Are the Prophet of Your Life today. A Chinese proverb says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. You should never be afraid of taking the bold step. You want to change a career at 40? Go for it. You need to acquire a new skill to boost your income? Go for it. You love someone but are scared to tell them? Come on, do it now. No one would kill you for that. It's the story of your life. Don't let anyone else but you be the writer. You can look beyond the facade of whatever despair and disappointment you are currently facing. Don't ever look down on yourself. If you ever have to look down, make sure it's your shoes you're admiring. You need a companion to help you through life? You need a companion to help make your decision making a lot easier? That companion is, you are the prophet of your life. Order yours now and live the life you've always wanted. You can read the first chapter of this book by going to https slash slash touchedbythelight.us. This video was brought to you by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries. Why not email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com and learn about the programs we have to assist women. We welcome women who wish to participate. Surely you have a few hours each month to help us with one of our programs. We believe that one of our programs, Recruiting Citizens, The Wall Project, Black Women and Cancer, Teach Someone to Read will interest you where you might volunteer once a month to help us. Our primary function is to assist women in changing their lives. Email us today. We would appreciate your help. Menzies Salon and Spa is now offering $25 flat irons Tuesdays and $55 relaxer touch-up trim style included on Wednesdays. Full body massage for $29. Barbara's on duty. Menzies Salon and Spa is a full service spa and salon. Located at 22884 Ryan at Nine Mile Road in Warren, Michigan. Call 
510-4545. Hello, this is Donna Stinson. Won't you join me every third Monday for Can We Talk About It? Where we do talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, you can catch us on Roku, Fire Stick, Comcast Channel 90, TV 33, On Demand, YouTube, Facebook Live. We are everywhere. Call in and give us your perspective on the topic of the day. I'll be there waiting to hear from you. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is Renee stepping out on faith. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can reach us at murdered voices at gmail.com stop thinking there's nothing you can do to change the world your life is important for more information on our books or subjects discussed email us at murdered voices at gmail.com dear listeners help us save the life stop breast cancer from taking lives will you assist us in putting the booklet black women and breast cancer in the hands of a million people please go to the website www.touchedbythelight.us and download the booklet black women and breast cancer then email this booklet to five friends asking them to email the booklet to five of their friends we are trying to reach a million women with this information to save lives The death of one woman to breast cancer from our community is one woman too many. We thank you for your support. Join us at the Women of Courage show every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. for information that will change your life. You can also visit us at our website, touchedbythelight.us. 